This is the Barbecue Central Radio Show, which airs live every Tuesday evening from 9 to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The Barbecue Central Show is being brought to you by Big Papa Smokers. Big Papa is the one-stop shop for anyone interested in barbecue, featuring a comprehensive selection of all American-made grills, spices, sauces, accessories, and everything that you need to make a world-class pit out of a 55-gallon drum. Visit them at BigPapaSmokers.com. And by the Barbecue Guru, makers of automatic pit temperature control devices and pits as well. You can visit them at TheBBQGuru.com. And by Cook Shack, a leader in pellet and electric style cookers. Visit them for specials online at CookShack.com or call them at 800-423-0698. And by Suckle Busters. Suckle Busters products are preferred by competition barbecue cooks. Texas-based, 100% made in the USA. Introduced first products to Barbecue Central over seven years ago. You can get in contact with them at SuckleBusters.com. Like them on their Facebook fan page, Suckle Busters, or visit TheTexasBBQForum.com. Check them out and see why Suckle Busters means busting with flavor. And by Stephen DeFranco Jeweler, the official jeweler of the Barbecue Central show. Visit them at stephendefranco.com or call 440-943-2700. And by Butcher Barbecue, makers of injections, sauces, and rubs. Find them online at butcherbbq.com. And by Green Mountain Grills, a leader in the pellet grill market. You can find out more about their cookers by visiting greenmountaingrills.com. And by CookinPellets.com, a maker of high-quality pellets for all of your pellet-driven cookers. You can visit them at CookinPellets.com, or you can find them at Amazon.com as well. Hi, I'm Johnny Dam, host of the Damage Report radio show. When I'm not falling in love with the First Amendment all over again, I like to sit back, relax, and rub my meat to the Barbecue Central show. And now your host, Greg Rempe. Go, Greg. Yeah. Rub that meat. So to get that perfect barbecue, you use wood. Are you sure it's safe? Whatever. We put the lighter fluid on, strike the match, and... Should we call the fire department? That might be a good idea. All right, good evening and welcome to the Really Big Barbecue Central Show. This is the show that talks about all things important in the world of barbecue and grilling, broadcasting live and direct from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city of Cleveland, Ohio. It is the barbecue capital of the North Coast. I'm your program host, Greg Rempe. Happy to have you aboard here on your Tuesday evening. You want to jump in on it tonight? More than happy to have you. A phone call, 216 220 0966. You can also email the show, Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. Anything else you want to find out about the show, as I tell you, each and every week can be found at the main website, the BBQ Central Show.com. And here's what's happening on the show tonight, coming up in about eh, 13 and a half minutes from now. We tried to get them last week. I'm not sure exactly where we fell short. Well, that's not true. I know exactly where I fell short. We just there was a digit that was double impose. I would impose it. So when we called, there was nobody there. However, through the help of the uh, person putting together this interview, we've gotten the right number dialed in. So we reload one of the three pitmasters of the Pork Brothers, Mike Fritz, will join us at 9.14 p.m. Eastern. Then at 9.35, to date the only editor when it comes to barbecue, not only in Texas, but across the country. Friend of the show, you see him every once and again, Daniel Vaughn. Full custom gospel barbecue originator, now the editor of Texas Monthly Barbecue. And then we'll move into the second hour. Currently at 1014. 
you ever wanted to jump in on the show, this is your time. It's an open segment. I got a bunch of stuff to talk about. Some stuff that has nothing to do with barbecue whatsoever. Also, you might see me do this during the course of the game, or oh, during the course of the evening. It's because uh, off in the distance, down in the kid dungeon, I have the uh, Cleveland Cavaliers v. Atlanta Hawks game going on, and currently we are in hand. Hey, we just made another one, ladies and gentlemen. J.R. Smith banging from downtown. Yeah. So we're looking for the sweep here in Cleveland. I'll be keeping myself abreast of the scoring. Needless to say, you must know that I love you rat bastards more than the Cleveland sports because I am here. I didn't find some cheap-ass, lame excuse to not show up tonight so I could take in the Cleveland Cavaliers' potential sweep and earning their way back into the NBA Finals tonight. No, I am putting on a show. As hard as that is to believe, as LeBron as LeBron James sinks another one, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. So, if you want to jump in on the show tonight, if you've always thought, I've got something to say, but I don't know where I fit in, so on, so forth, but you think you can bring something positive, something of substance, Maybe I don't agree with what you're going to say. I don't care. Just bring it in in a strong and spectacular fashion, and we'll be fast friends. But a lot of stuff to get to otherwise. So if you want to jump in, you can say it, 216-220-0966, and you can do that at 1014 tonight. And coming out of the bullpen, the official Barbecue Central Sauce and Rub reviewer and the creator of Scott Roberts' web, Scott Roberts resumes his monthly role. We're going to change it up just a tad. I mean, typically we do, I believe it's two sauces. And uh, I think we do uh, it's two sauces and, and one rub, I believe. That's typically what we do. Uh, we're going to change it up a little bit. We're kind of doing a fun balance of... What's the fun balance? Just checking my gate ratio. We're going to do a fun balance of hot wing sauce and some of Scott's favorite sauces since we've been doing this uh, show live. Since we've had Scott on the show, I mean, this is what we're going to do. So uh, I always think it's fun to kind of go back, and if you're new to the show and you have not listened to Scott's reviews before, this will get you quickly up to speed on what some of his favorite sauces are. And if you're a fan, I mean... You're a barbecuer, so I know you got to love the hot wings, so we're going to get some of Scott's hot wing sauces as well. If you're lucky, I might share my own hot wing sauce with everybody tonight. So watch out. All right, folks, you know the show's on. If you could, do me a favor. Get on the Facebook, get on the Twitter, let everybody know that this show is happening live right now. You can send them to a couple different links. If you know they have no access to computers or videos, hey, that's fine. This was a radio show when it started originally, and I reluctantly added video due to the request and demand of the Centralites, which I'm still unsure why I actually did that. Nevertheless, uh, if you want to send them to the audio only, send them to the main website, thebbqcentralshow.com. You can also send them to TuneIn, one word, TuneIn.com, and then search BBQ Central. You can get the live audio stream there. You can go to iTunes Radio and under Talk, it's alphabetically listed. Look for Barbecue Central Radio. You can get it done there as well. So very fun, very exciting. If you have a video capability on the good old computer, you can send them to OutdoorCookingChannel.com, longtime video syndication partner of the show. And if you have Roku or some other IP television style devices, go into your app store, depending on what you have, and look for Outdoor Cooking Channel there. If you have it, download it, and then you not only have access to the live stream, but you have access to the host of video archives that Kevin Bevington has there. He is the creator of OutdoorCookingChannel.com. So there you go. Uh, Don't forget, you can find and subscribe to the Audible replays of this show through iTunes, the most prolific and popular way to get replays of this show. You can also go to my YouTube page, listed there in the lower third, but it's basically slash B-A-R-B-E-C-U-E, the numeral four, the letter U. 
barbecue for you. Uh, Outdoor Cooking Channel obviously has the replays and the main clearinghouse for any and all audible and video style replays is the Barbecue Central's main website. So summer perhaps is coming up and I wanted to get you guys ready with drinks for the barbecue season. Yeah. This coming from the Globe and Mail, and there's a Canadian leaf, so it, I don't know if this is a Canadian thing, but it says .com, not .ca, so I'm 50-50 on it. However, there are references to Canada, which makes me potentially believe that, yeah, it is uh, Canadian, which is fine. So if you're going to be eating burger, tis the Sausen for Belgian-style farmhouse beer, such as a Sayasan Dupont, a summer standard known for its earthly fluffy foam, <laughs> light herbal citrus notes, and golden hue. Perhaps the quintessential farmhouse ale, Sayasan Dupont, is the only accompaniment a burger needs. It's uh, $7.75. Then, if you like the barbecued shrimp on the Bobby, you need something with a little zip. How about a fresh take on a zesty and uplifting? Classic Paloma cocktail. You got tequila, sweet, fresh, ruby red grapefruit juice, sour lime juice, a little ting soda for a hint of sweet. Build a cocktail in a tall glass with two ounces of tequila, two ounces grapefruit juice, one ounce lime juice. Stir, fill with ice. You're off and running. That's going to cost you about $44, $45. And if you're going to do spicy grilled chicken tacos, because that's what I think about when I'm doing barbecue, wheat beers and Latin flavors get along so well that the pairing is almost cliched, but Les Trios Mascutiteris Hapenvis is breathing new life into the old tradition, the slightly savory Quebec craft beer. Uh, Quebec craft beer. Say that five times real quick. Compliments salsa, grilled meats, and kizo, which, of course, we all know is... Uh, cheese, right? Oh, my Lord. It's a blowout going on right now in the first half of the Cavs game. I'm very excited. Question to the chat room before we hit the first break and come back with Mike Fritz. Has anybody used Uber? Have you ever used Uber as a customer, or have you? are you an Uber driver? I'm looking for both reactions, especially if you're an Uber driver. How do you like it? I'm interested. Let me tell you what else is interesting to me. Big Papa Smokers, for crying out loud, it's the one-stop shop for anyone interested in barbecue. Number one dealer of Mac Pellet Grills in the world. Big Papa Smokers features a wide selection of American-made grills and smokers, such as the Old Hickory Ace BP, the Gateway Drum Smokers, and even a drum kit that gives you everything you need to make a world-class smoker out of a 55-gallon drum. Big Papa Smokers has also made a name for itself in recent years by crafting an award-winning line of championship rubs. From flavors like Sweet Money to Happy Ending, their rubs have had a hand in winning almost every major barbecue competition, including the 2012 and 13 American Royal, the 12 and 14 Jack Daniels, the 13 Kingsford Challenge, and the 14 Houston Livestock and Rodeo, also the 14 King of the Smoker. And don't think that BPS can just be pigeonholed into the competitive barbecue either. No, 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 no. BPS rubs have become so well-known. They've been picked up by a national restaurant chain, BJ's Restaurant and Brew House. The four of the nine BPS rubs featured on the permanent menu and amid glowing reviews, BPS rubs are proven to be a great addition to anyone's pantry. Big Papa is also banded together with fellow California-based rub company Simply Marvelous Barbecue to form what has now become known as the West Coast Offense. Defying conventional wisdom, these two California-based rub makers have cornered the market on competitive barbecue and begun to redefine the flavor profiles that competitive cooks from across the country have begun to aim for. Big Papa's website also features an online meat locker with top-quality meats from Snake River Farms, shipped right to your front door from the American Kobe Beef, Caribou to Pork, the Double R Ranch Meats. Big Papa's meat locker has something for every type of barbecue aficionado. Committed to bringing you the best barbecue flavors on the market, they've also introduced Swamp Boy Sauce, a fine swine sauce, Granny's Barbecue Sauce. These are the new kids on the block the barbecue season, so get after them. Big Papa has also created a unique brand ambassador program called the BPS Elite Team, featuring 15 of the best competition teams of the country, working together to promote camaraderie, competition barbecue, and benefit children's charities across the U.S. Keep in mind, folks, Big Papa's has been able to do this 
Within only the five years of being in business, turning the competition barbecue world on its head, providing customers with the very best barbecue products, becoming a staple of a nationwide restaurant chain, and benefiting children's charities across the U.S. Just the beginning. For Big Papa Smokers, again, the website, BigPapaSmokers.com. That's BigPapaSmokers.com. We're back with Mike Fritz from the Pork Brothers right after this. Stick around. We'll be right back. Casting live from the Barbecue Central Radio Network studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. Hey, welcome back, everybody. 216-220-0966. Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. This portion of the Barbecue Central Show being brought to you by Sam's Club. That's right, Sam's Club National Barbecue Tour, 31 cities, 500 grand in cash to be won. Next stop on the tour is this Saturday, May 30th, Hendersonville, Tennessee. It's a local qualifier that feeds the top six teams in the South Haven, Mississippi Regional Final that takes place September 9th of this year. To find out more about the Sam's Club Series, check the results, or to potentially register your team to compete. You only got to win three to win all the money. You can visit KCBS. Dot us slash sam's tour that's kcbs.us slash sam's tour all right joining me now a guy we were supposed to have last week we had a little number mix up everything has been fixed now uh you can find him last week at the berea national rib cook-off you can find him this week at the lima ohio pig fest one of the three pit masters of the pork brothers competition team mike fritz joining me here on the show mike how are you buddy hey i'm good how are you doing today this evening how are you doing this evening doing absolutely fabulous mike Appreciate you uh, reloading for the show again. We were just one digit off last week, but of course, as you well know, one digit is between life or death anymore here on the uh, interview circuit. Uh, so I appreciate you uh, reloading again for this week. I guess, Mike, before we get into you know the, the meat and the barbecue of the conversation, I guess what drew my interest in, in having you guys on, not only the fact that you're uh, competitive barbecuers uh, on the rib side, but uh, also uh, you are uh, deeply entrenched into uh, aviation. All three of you guys are pilots, so I guess I'm interested to know how even you guys have time to get together and, and get those rib recipes going, and, and how does the team form originally? Uh, the team formed originally over a uh, Labor Day weekend about 15 to 10 to 15 years ago. We were all college roommates, and we got together for a, for a holiday weekend and decided over some good barbecue that uh, other people ought to have some of it as well. So we just started a former team. Now, were you guys pilots at that point um, or uh, aspiring pilots, or how does that work out? No, at that point in time, we were, we were pilots. Uh, we... Uh, got out of the university in the late 80s early 90s as pilots and been flying ever since and uh, we all do the corporate aviation stuff flying the rich and famous at places they want to go and so we find a little bit of time to do some cooking now uh are you guys uh all working for the same company what's the who are you guys flying for like net jets or flight options or who do you got one, one of our partners uh flies for net jets one of us flies for a uh, medical billing company I fly for a construction company in a little university, which I prefer not to name at this point in time. <laughs> Got it. Uh, so, are you? Is it all? Is it all jet stuff? Or are you doing like King Airs? Or what do you? What are you flying? No, nope, it, it, it's our jet. I'm in the Citation Five, Citation Five Hundred, and the Phenom. One of our buddies fly a Doug flies the Citation Sovereign, and important to Brad. This got checked out in the Challenger Six Hundred Four. He's yeah. on the West Coast someplace this weekend. Yeah, love the Challengers, no doubt about it. Um, I spent I spent a little time on the 121 side in private charter on the 50 passenger ERJ 145s. Uh, so you know, so you're Phenom man. Uh, yes, I, man. that's right. Uh, Embraer guy all the way through. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, aside from being uh, very fickle on the electrical stuff, uh, they're uh, very very nice planes, if I do say so myself. Yep. Um, all right. So yep. when 
when you decided everybody else should have some of this good barbecue, where does the competitive juices start to flow, and how do you find yourself going into your first event, and when was that? Oh, they they went into the first event 10 years ago, and, and they was doing it then, and I didn't join into the last uh, couple of three years. I had families to take care of to begin with and little kids to spend my time with. So they suckered me into a couple of three years ago. And uh, the competitive juices always did flow between us. So we like to go out there and compete on a day-to-day basis. Now, what you guys are doing as the Pork Brothers is a little bit out of the normal than what we talk about here on this show. Typically, you know, I'll have a KCBS pitmaster or an FBA guy or some of the Texas uh, sanctioning bodies, IBCA, Texas Gulf Coast, and so forth. So they're doing, you know, the yeah. KCBS, the FB guys are doing the four meets. Uh, the Texas guys do three meets. Um, evidently, they don't like pork shoulder down there. Um, so so they they just leave it off altogether. But you're, uh, I guess, more or less what we'd call ribbers, right? You guys are rib burners? Yeah, yeah, but we, we are more ribbers, and uh, we do have some, some of the K, KC barbecue events, but uh, we don't uh, participate in them many. And we're more of a burner, more of a vendor and a more of a people pleaser, I guess, than uh, the true competition guys. So how does that particular situation work to what the fans of this show are normally used to hearing about? How do you, you know, can you just enter a rib contest? Is it something that you have to be kind of willed into in order to, to get on that kind of a circuit? How does the whole thing lay out when you're going to be, for instance, you're doing the uh, Lima, Ohio Pig Fest this coming weekend. Now, as luck would have it, there's a KCBS event tied into that. I actually know about that. Uh, but last week you were at the Berea Rib Cook-Off uh, just west of Cleveland here. So how do you get entered yep. in there, and, and what's a, a weekend for you three like? Oh, getting in is, uh, I mean, it's a pretty stiff competition getting into the Berea-like type of events. Us, I think last weekend we had 15 ribbers from uh, Texas, South Carolina, Arkansas, all over the Midwest it came in and set up. I think there was a, what we had bands and music for three days, four days, probably sold, I don't know, five, 600 cases of ribs at least between the guys, probably more. And do, yeah. do you have to, like, what's your, uh, do you have to buy into every event or are you buying all those ribs? We're buying those ribs, and you, you buy in. I mean, it, it's it's an entry fee to get in, and you hope you make your money back on the on the customer turnout or the the people turnout. What kind of an entry fee are you looking at to get in one of these things? Anywhere from three or four hundred bucks on a big event. That Lima one was uh, three grand. Three thousand dollars. Three grand to walk in the gate. <laughs> Man. Did you say you fly jets or you make enough money to own jets? Holy moly. That's a that's a big <laughs> no, layout, I'm, right? Dude, just fly one. Yeah, I mean, that's a big layout, right? It is a big layout. And if the weather stays nice, you're good. If the weather goes down the tubes, it's not a good weekend. So is it... But, a, hey, if the weather goes bad, it's a good tax write off. Yeah, absolutely. Now, <laughs> since, there's th- since there's three of you, I don't know. I don't ever want to just write off $3,000, I guess, but nevertheless... <laughs> Um, when, when you guys are kind of planning out, do you, is this something that you look over a schedule at the beginning of the year and decide, you know, these are the events we want to go to? Is it, these are the ones that are only going for us to go to. So these are the ones we have to do, whether we like it or not. How does a, a season run up for you guys? No, we sit down, uh, December, January. I'm, I'm actually looking now for 2016 and pick the events that we want to do and the locations that we think we can do good in and try to get those scheduled now. The challenge is which one of us can do them when it comes down to time to go do it. So is it... Because, uh, of, our flight, because of our flight schedule, you know, we can't yeah. tell a boss he can't go to the island because we're going to go cook ribs. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Uh, so is it a is it a is kind of a majority thing where if two of you can make it, you'll do it, or do all three of you have to go, or just one of you, or how does that work out? Just one of us is required. We, wow. we, we like one of us there. But uh, we hope they ever make three there anymore. That's just becoming an impossible task. So how how are Which you is able to? Why I joined up to <laughs> give us three to to do with instead of two. How, how can you if it's only one of you? How can you compete and vend and serve them? I mean, I don't know what it's like across the rest of the country, but I mean, as soon as Memorial Day hits. It's like, as you saw, you know, this past weekend, there was the Berea rib cook-off on the west side. There was the Mark's rib cook-off right downtown on uh, uh, BKL. Uh, So Mm -hmm. 
Um, I just completely lost my uh, train of thought there. Well, I mean, so rib <laughs> rib competitions, at least in the Cleveland area, go off like hot fire here for the next six, seven weeks. Um, so yeah. how are you able to accommodate the competition side and vending to make some of that cash back? It's uh, friends and family. Last weekend I had my <laughs> wife, uh, my daughter, my son, two of his buddies, and I got lucky last weekend. One of my partners, Doug, was a, uh, was available. So we actually had two of us there last weekend, but can never plan on it. And do you have one of those huge, like 17 story setups with all the banners and the, 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 <laughs> the pull screens and all that stuff? Or what's your, what's your, cause yeah, uh, yeah you know, we, we have one of those 17 story banners. <laughs> yeah. Really? If you don't have one, you, you got to have one. It, it's, what we do is all about the show and, and the display. If you can't display for the big boys, you might as well stay home because there's no money in it. Well, that was the thing that I was going to say. It seems that the the well, pardon my French, but it seems like you know a, a bigger dick contest, right? I mean, the bigger, <laughs> yep, the yep. wider, the higher, the more crazy. How long does that take to set up? Does it look a lot more labor intensive than it really is? No, no, it's it's tremendous labor intensive. <laughs> I think uh, wonderful. <laughs> you know, I think it took us two and a half hours or so to get all set ready to set up the other day. The good thing about it is everybody helps. You, the, even if you don't go and know the guys, you basically just walk down the row standing up signs. You get assembled, and we just walk down and stand them up one at a time. So it's kind of like a brotherhood when you go out and do that stuff, kind of like the other events that you talk about. Uh, we're talking with Mike Fritz. He is one of the pit masters with the Pork Brothers. They're going to be uh, trying their hand at the Lima, Ohio Pig Fest this coming weekend. So if you want to... Uh, or if you're going to be out in that area of Ohio this coming weekend, be sure to stop by and check them out. All right, so, uh, Mike, you, you know, ribs obviously is the specialty. You did say you try your hand at some of the other events, but uh, ribs is where it's at. So how do you uh, select the ribs? Or is it only spare ribs for you guys? And kind of if you could, uh, maybe without revealing too many secrets, take me through the whole process of, of how you're doing your ribs and how you serve them up to the public. Yeah, well, spare ribs is our, is our rib of choice, of course, and uh, we are dry rib guys. We are strictly all about the rub and, and the in the spice. We, you know, we like it a little sweet, a little hot, and uh, you know, most of the guys cover or do something to it. We're one hundred percent dry rub guys across the board. And are you using a rub that is commercially available, or does uh, the Pork Brothers have their own rub that you've devised, but also might be selling as well? <laughs> well, we have our own rub which we use most of the time. Depending upon a flight schedule, once in a while we have to resort back to cheating <laughs> to get things accomplished. But uh, we have our own rub, our own sauce that we use whenever, whenever possible. All right, it's so the best way to go. Cooking process wise, uh, what what kind of a cooker do you run, and you know how are you cooking? We run a uh, Southern Pride 500, which is you know gas powered. A propane powered burner using a hickory or apple most of the time to smoke with. And it's it's slow and slow. The ribs are usually, you know, three, three and a half hours in the smoker. You know, two forty five, two fifty. And we come out, you know, basically Kansas City barbecue, just that little tear we like to get out of it. Nice little glaze on top. It does a really good job. One of the other things that I see that I kind of associate with the rib burns uh, versus the other kind of competitions is that, you know, guys seem to have the the big uh, tray style grill, charcoal grills, and that they got the, the ribs on there and they are saucing the shit out of their ribs and turning them and saucing them and turning them and saucing them. Uh, is that a, a similar process? Is that like a, a common practice or is that just something to kind of get the crowd motivated that's watching the uh, eight o'clock uh, in the morning news in the morning? Some of that is get crowd motivated, and some of that, I hate to say, is because they cooked them last week, and there's only way to get moisture back into them is to bury them under sauce and warm them back up again. Whoa! Watch out! <laughs> We're pulling the curtain back, ladies and gentlemen. It's a lot of money to, to lay waste to otherwise, right? Yep, yep. But, uh, yeah, but most of those guys cook the week before. We do ours straight from the smoker to the, to the plate. So when you're buying, like, what's the the most amount of racks of ribs that you would buy for a weekend? We had, uh, we did 50 racks last weekend in Bria. Uh, 50 cases, I mean, so uh, watch 50 times 12 is whatever that is. I can tell so, you. Yeah, 50 cases last weekend. 
50 times 12 is 240 racks of ribs. Yeah, yeah, which is our biggest weekend. We don't like so we don't do many of them, six to eight a year. Trying to find time to get in the flight schedule anymore on that's an impossible task. And we do it for the fun of it. Where do you where are you buying fifty cases of ribs? I um, mean, we have a local supplier next to one of us. We buy most of them off of. And some of the events, like the Bria event, there's a corporate sponsor that uh, likes you to buy them off of him. Who is that? Which that's uh, it was U.S. Uh, oh, U.S. Food. Yeah, U- U.S. Food this week. Yeah. Yeah, and does he give and you that a makes deal? It convenient, but they just chuck them in. Yeah, well, yeah, he's probably got like five pup reefers just sitting there full of ribs, right? <laughs> no, there was four sitting there this weekend, oh, yes, sir. God. Yeah, and does he give yeah. you a deal, or does he give you the high hard one? No, it's a deal. You don't have to buy it for him. He just gives you the opportunity there at Bria. I know they have uh, the Columbus Rib Fest as a true corporate sponsor, and we have to buy off of them there. But uh, actually, his price is the best price we found all year. Now, when you're vending the ribs versus uh, turning them in, and I would imagine that when you're turning them in for judging, are they just taking like the the local socialites and celebrities to do the judging, or do they have a uh, a certain amount of people that travel with you guys uh, and that are trained judges in order to pick a winner? Depends on the event. Most of the events are just socialites to pick whatever hits their fancy. Some of them actually brings in KFC judges or other, from other entities to judge it. But most of the time, they're just normal human beings. They go, oh, that's a good one. <laughs> it, well, is there is there any uh, difference between how you're cooking your ribs to vend versus what you're turning in for the competition portion of it? Yeah, n- not really. What we figure is good enough for the judge is good enough for the customer. So we, we treat the judge about the same way. We may spend a little more time cutting, a little bit more time, you know, making it look pretty for the presentation, but the the prep process is the same. What do you What do you get if you win it? Like, did you, how did you do last week in Berea? We uh, did not win. I can tell you that. Uh, <laughs> like last week in Berea, they had the uh, best rib, best sauce. Then they had a people's choice. People's choice is the one we all want because that means they're going to come buy everything you have left. Yeah, right. And it's it's all about the trophy. In the, the customer base, you know, if you win, if you win a title in an event, the next year you reap benefits in the form of Jeffersons, Hammertons, or Franklins. <laughs> you mean card, cold hard cash, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Show it's me the, about the money, the greenbacks. That's right. Um, all right, so you're going to be in Lima. Well, let me ask you one other question. So, what what was you pay the entry fee uh, mm-hmm. last week, and then you you buy all the ribs? Like, what was your expense layout last week? Oh, I think Just we spent uh, ballpark. I think we spent. 10, I think we spent ten grand before we showed up. <laughs> oh, ten grand. Okay, so that's serious cash. So after the van, I mean, the weekend was pretty good. I mean, long weekend. You, you know, good yep. weather. It was kind of hot a couple of days. Uh, what are you able to make back? Plus, I mean, what's your what's your financial situation like there? Yeah, we like to be at least. Uh, we like to turn at least a fifty percent profit, if not better. At the new events, it's it's tough sometimes, but uh, we usually get it accomplished. But the big guys up there, you know, that was a fifteen vendor show. Some of those guys made a, made a fortune. <laughs> I have to be honest with you. Some of those guys kicked butt up the, those events. So if I and if I put in ten right there yet. if I put in ten grand for an event, I mean, it's not it's not uh, crazy then to think that I could recoup back at thirty or forty G. So I'm I'm plus thirty in the net. Yeah, you could be. You can put in the. You're probably going to put in more than ten grand to be plus to plus thirty because you got your rib costs, so you have some wow. few supplies. But you know, labor, labor and setup is the most expensive part of it. So once you start selling them, the more you sell, the more you make. Thirty, forty grand is an easy weekend, I would think, at the for some of those guys. Wow, absolutely incredible! Great insight. We're talking with Matt yeah. Fritz. He is uh, one of the three pit masters of the Pork Brothers. And you can find him this weekend in beautiful, dare I say, tropical Lima, Ohio. And, of course, anybody that knows that is, as I'm, if, it's open mic night, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, he will be at the Lima, Ohio Pig Fest, as I said earlier, uh, that does have a KCBS competition attached to it as well. Uh, but Mike, and uh, depending on one of his other uh, co-pilots, I might be joining him. I mean co-pilot and only the, the Brotherhood barbecue way, not the, they're the right seat and you're the left seat. Um, that uh, you guys will uh, be together and uh, looking to snatch a championship up in Lima, Ohio, right? 
Yes, sir. Hopefully we can get something out of it. That's what we're looking for. All right, Mike. If we win every weekend. It'll be nice. I appreciate the time tonight, and good luck this coming weekend. Okay, thank you very much. Yep. You have a good evening. You too. There he is. Mike Fritz from the Pork Brothers, ladies and gentlemen. You know, that's that's a whole different thing. Like, I never... I had a... Uh, man, does any... He, he just passed away, too. I mean, dude was a legend on the River Circuit. Does anybody remember Billy Bones? Shout out posthumously to Billy Bones. He was like a Michigan guy. Everybody remember Billy Bones? I mean... Straight up river legend, and I had him on the show once. But this is like this is what Mike and his boys do. They're rivers, so they uh, somehow get on the the dude ten grand to do Berea. That's and depending on who you talk, I'm not looking to start any fights here. But if you talk about you know the rib cookoff in Cleveland, everybody talks about the Marks one that's downtown at uh, Burke Lakefront Airport. That one has been going on forever and ever. And then Berea has risen to uh, some type of uh, popular fame. And then you got them in Strongsville and you got them in Lima now. I mean, they're popping up all over. As soon as Memorial Day hits, or, um, yeah, as soon as Memorial Day hits, man, these rib contests come out of the woodwork because people in Ohio are and love ribs. Book it, Dano. Thanks to Mike. Good luck in Lima this coming weekend public service announcement to the barbecue brothers and sisters out there from your show sponsor Stephen DeFranco of stephendefranco.com that's right folks he's a barbecue junkie I've told you a hundred times Father's Day is coming soon what to get dear old dad new clothes that he won't wear no new shoes that'll cover in barbecue sauce no a new tie forget it Stephen DeFranco Jewelers has the perfect answer a new watch that's right Steve has an incredible selection of watches it would be perfect for dear old dad. How about Bolova watches? Why spend a ton of money on a watch if you don't have to? Bolova watches, stylish, affordable, starting under $200. Bolova watches come in traditional court styles, retro styled automatic versions, chronographs, skeletons, and traditional styles fill out the Bolova line of timepieces. How about that precisionist? I got one. Want the most accurate time in the world? Who doesn't? The precisionist is that watch. Exclusive movements from the precisionist break down the second hand. Movement into 16 segments per second, giving you secondhand a smooth moving appearance. Steel and titanium versions are available as well. The Accutron, I got one of those too. High end without the high price Cadillac of the Bull of a Line. The Accutron is the pinnacle of high design and uh, high end design without breaking the bank, starting below 600 bucks. The Accutron watch gives you that high end style, quality, and lifestyle without breaking the bank. Now, maybe you're a gadget junkie. Citizens might be perfect for you, gadget guy. EcoDrive technology converts light and energy, powering your watch perfectly and accurately. Need a timer for your barbecue cooking? Some citizens have multiple timers along with alarms, multiple time zones, etc. And last but not least, oh, i got to get me one of these. The Philip & Company. Many high-end European watch companies use swift movements from a company called ETA. Philip hand assembles his watches personally using ETA movements. Handpick components starting at eight ninety five. Philips watches not only have an elegant European style, but they're affordable. All of the Philips watches are serial numbered and registered with Philip himself. All watches from Stephen DeFranco Jewelers come with the exclusive watch performance package that includes a one year extension to manufacturer's warranty, free engraving, free batch, uh, free watch batteries for life, free polishing cloth. All of this at no additional charge. Call Steve right now, 440-943-2700. Tell me your barbecue brother or sister. He'll give you the real discounted price on the watch. It's not allowed by the manufacturer to give you the real discounted price. 440-943-2700. As always, Steve will ship the watch to you for free as well. Daniel Vaughn, out of the break. Stay tuned. Smoke. Call 877-448-0433 to get on the air. Now, here's your host, Greg Rampey. All right. Welcome back. This portion of the Barbecue Central Show being brought to you by Green Mountain Grills, manufacturers of some of the greatest pellet cookers on the market today. If you're looking for a big cooker to house a lot of food, they got one for you. If you're looking for something M-O-R, yeah, they got you covered there. That's middle of the road, buddy. They got you covered there, too. Something to take on the tailgates. Football season's coming not too far away. 
They got you supplied there as well. How about pellets for those cookers? You know it's pellet-driven. You can get great pellets from Green Mountain Grills as well. Visit GreenMountainGrills.com. GreenMountainGrills.com. I love mine. You could love yours, too, if you'd only go to GreenMountainGrills.com, and you can hook yourself up with something like, I got the Jim Bowie. I love big. Go big or go home. That's my motto. And talking about big or going home, he is the only barbecue editor that I am aware of in this vast country of ours, located in the Texas. You see him on this show every once in a while as well. It is Daniel Vaughn joining us here, the prophet of Smoke Meat. Daniel, how are you, buddy? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Well, I'm doing absolutely fabulous, Daniel. We're watching the Cavaliers put the veritable smack down on the candy asses of the Atlanta Hawks. It's a blowout. Uh, I like to hear it. As a former Buckeye, I can imagine you have at least some uh, allegiance back on this side of the country, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's not not hard to cheer against the Atlanta Hawks either. Well, if if the Atlanta – well, it, it seems that the Atlanta Hawks will fall in spectacular fashion to the Cavs tonight. On the off chance that the Houston Rockets can somehow claw back and win the West, will you have a hard time deciding who you should vote for then? Absolutely not. No. Uh, when you're when you live in Dallas, and uh, I'm I'm also a fan of the Dallas Mavericks. There's no love for Houston. Aha, uh-huh. that's right. So it's it's Cavs by default, if nothing else. That's right. All right. Exactly. I'll take I'll take it. However, I can get it. Uh, Daniel Vaughn is our guest right now. He is the barbecue editor for Texas Monthly, the website tmbbq.com. Uh, Daniel, a couple things that I wanted to talk to you about tonight, and we'll see what's happening uh, in your neck of the woods as well. Uh, first, uh-huh. I remember, I don't want to bring the show down here, but I remember, was it a year or so ago, you got into a little bit of an internet tussle with one Josh Ozerski, who uh, recently and suddenly passed away. And yes. I, I guess, you know, I wanted to get your take on you know, what you feel Josh's legacy is, uh, not only in barbecue, but I guess kind of in the whole food blogging and food promotion genre and kind of, you know, what kind of a of a emotion and what kind of an energy he was bringing to the industry. Certainly a lot of energy, uh, a lot of strong opinions, uh, which is why he was so fun to spar with. Uh, it, it really is a real loss for, uh, for people with, you know, true opinions. Uh, so many so many food writers these days really just go along with whatever the popular opinion is or, uh, you know, just basically fawn over the same chefs or, or pit masters over and over. Uh, he, he was a guy who, who wasn't afraid to pull punches. Uh, he had, like I said, very strong opinions. Uh, I, I disagreed with some of them, but I agreed with, uh, with usually the heart of them most of the time. Why do you think, I mean, being in the, the journalistic realm as you have been for a number of years now, why do you think there has been, I don't know if I want to call it a trend, but there does seem to be a decidedly uh, obvious, as you said, um, thing where th- these people will just fall over the same talking heads and the same chefs that they see put up on television, where, you know, in years past, I think it was not only... Uh, liked and valued, but people wanted to see somebody have their own opinion and stand up for what they believed in, which seems to have kind of ushered through the wayside now. Well, I think a couple of things you're talking about here. One being, you know, the same people getting repeated attention over and over. And I think that really just comes with the cycle of things where you have somebody locally uh, who quote unquote discovers someone uh, that person starts to get uh, attention, maybe statewide, uh, and then especially in a place like here in Austin, you know, you have a, a lot of places who get attention over and over. Uh, Franklin Barbecue being one, Law Barbecue being another. Uh, both of those places uh, very much uh, deserve all that attention. Um, but you also have to remember that when media from outside, like uh, from from New York or California or Chicago or wherever they're coming from, when they come to Austin for South by Southwest um, or whatever big function is going on in Austin, those are the places they're going to go, and they're going to go back to their uh, their magazines or their local newspapers, and those are the places they're going to write about. So it just it gets uh, further and further written about. And inevitably, it seems that there is 
hardly any negative criticism when those people go back to their uh, own shitholes of life, wherever they're coming from, and and almost perpetuate, uh, in my estimation, a uh, they're saying this is great one, and perhaps in reality it's it's average or perhaps less than average. Well, the, the, yes, I agree, uh, but also you have to understand that if somebody is coming from a place that is, uh, you know, take barbecue for example, if you're coming from a place that is not exactly rich in barbecue tradition, and you are uh, you know, you're coming into Texas and you're eating some place that might we might not consider to be so great. It might be the best barbecue you've ever eaten. Uh, so that it's an honest opinion you're coming back with. It's just an opinion that uh, doesn't have a whole lot of depth to it because you haven't done much much legwork or much search, searching around. So I think there's a lot a lot that has to do with that as well. Daniel Vaughn joining us here on the show, the barbecue editor for Texas Monthly, tmbbq.com is the website if you want to check it out here while we're yakking it up here for the next few minutes. Uh, one of the other things but, I want uh, to... Just sorry to, yeah, to yeah, interrupt, but you know, I, I see the same thing. You know, when I, I had a, a personal blog for a while, Full Custom Gospel Barbecue, and I, I wrote reviews on that every place I went. Um, and by and large, the reviews were negative. Uh, that, that really is just because the, you know, great barbecue is, um, is truly revered because there's just not a whole lot of it. And so... Uh, nowadays, I, I see it as I have more Twitter followers. I'm I'm representing Texas Monthly Magazine. That when I have something negative to say, especially on Twitter, uh, people jump all over it as if I'm as if I'm some sort of bad guy because I had a, a poor barbecue meal and I let people know about it. So it, it's not only um, just a journalist who um, maybe it's you know it's easier to make friends and it's it's a lot easier to write those positive reviews. Uh, and then from my perspective, most of the reviews that I end up, the full reviews I end up putting up on TMBBQ are positive. Uh, the reason for that is because I'm finding places that are far flung, uh, that are you know, not very well-known places. Uh, that's my goal anyway, is to find those places. And if I find one that's great, I want to tell everyone about it. I want to tell you to go there. If you're a little mom and pop shop, you know, out in you know middle of nowhere, Texas, and the people that are reading TMBBQ are probably never going to pass by there anyway. It doesn't really do a huge service to them to let them know to steer clear. Um, so I, I end up using most of my space on TMBBQ to let people know places where they should be going. Um, now again, that doesn't that doesn't stop me from being brutally honest on Twitter, but uh, I I do get a lot of flack for that uh, sometimes, depending on. Yeah, you know, just depending on the the opinion of the reader, I guess. But I don't think there's any issue with that. I'm not sucking your ass, by the way, but I don't think there's any issue with having the space that you have. And if you are if you know going onto your page that you're just going to slough off the riffraff and tell you, this is where I think you should be going. I don't want you to waste your time. I don't want to waste my space here on this Internet. And these are the places that I would suggest if you go. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think where... The delineation line needs to be drawn is all of these other websites that get free product or get some type of quote unquote sponsorship to uh, evaluate something. And it, there is never, ever, ever anything bad ever said about anything on these people's blogs. And you can't, you don't want to be a shill for anybody, right? Well, right. And the other thing to remember too is if you're writing a restaurant review, you really are writing criticism. Um, and so when I review a place, like take take a place um, that I just reviewed a couple of weeks ago, uh, the barbecue shop out in Farwell, Texas. Uh, Farwell is out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, it's, uh, it's an hour and a half from Lubbock and an hour and a half from Amarillo. Um, it's out there. And it was, a, it was a mostly positive review. I gave it a good rating. I basically told people it is worth the drive to come out here and check it out. Uh, but I had some negative things to say about a few of their menu items and one of their regulars got on it. Just, you know, just tried to give it to me there in the comment section that, uh, somehow I just didn't get this place and, you know, how, how could I come out here and trash it? And I'm like, Whoa, I didn't, I didn't trash it, but, um, not everything at the barbecue shop is perfect. Uh, there's a lot of stuff out there that's, that's worth traveling for, but, uh, you know, they certainly have some room to improve, which that's really the case with most every restaurant. So I think, I think there's also this idea that if it's, uh, if you're saying something nice about a place, it all has to be nice. Do you get, 
can I hook you in on the Twitter? Like, will you will you start getting after people that are getting after you or given your uh, status and, and who you're working with? Uh, do you just kind of slough it off and not get pulled into it? Well, I mean, it depends if they're coming at me with a serious question. Uh, you know, that's that's really the way I judge it, uh, whether it's worth engaging with someone. Um, if they're, you know, if they're just... If they're just throwing a rock, hoping to get a reaction, that's one thing. But if they truly want to start a start a discussion or even start a debate, I'm happy. I'm always happy to do that. Daniel Vaughn joining me here on the show. Uh, Daniel, let me ask you uh, one last thing here uh, before I turn you loose here, as time is uh, rapidly expiring for us. Um, but let's do it again sooner than later before uh, before the segment ends. Um, the Barbecue Hall of Fame, uh, which is now run through the American Royal, is I don't know the other two thirds of it, but I know that much to my dismay because I wasn't elected. Uh, Stephen Reichland is going to be ushered in under the celebrity slash humanitarian category. And we can uh, obviously argue about if there should be categories in the Hall of Fame. And if not, and if you're a fan of this show and I'm not talking to you just in general, I mean, you know what my feelings are on all that stuff, but. Do you, I mean, is there any more deser- anyone more deserving than Stephen Reichland to get into the Hall of Fame under any type of segment? Well, uh, I mean, first I, I have to uh, temper any response that I have with the fact that I'm on the selection committee for the barbecue. You Hall are? Thing. Oh, good. I'm uh, gl- hold on a second. That I'm glad we have you. Now let's here we go. Uh, number one, how the f did I not make the Hall of Fame this year? Who's more important than me, Daniel? Name well, three had, people. There, there were there were just three other names ahead of you, but uh, name them. Yeah, and, name and them. I'll, I'll tell I'll, you. And I wasn't allowed to vote for myself, so mm. you know we're we're just we're <laughs> both stuck outside on the on the outside looking in. But absolutely, Stephen Reichlin is uh, uh, is certainly deserving. He's he's been a a face of of barbecue globally uh, for such a long time. He's done so much to get so many people. Uh, out, out from their kitchens and and outdoors cooking. So, just for that alone, he certainly deserves a spot. So, like, what's the deal with the categories, man? Is that I'm not like here you're, to, you're I'm not, not here to explain the categories or any of that? I uh, like is that uh, are you we're doing, you just vote on people and you're not part exactly. of having categories or yeah, not? They, yes, as part of the selection, as part of the voting committee, I shouldn't. Shouldn't use the word selection committee as part of the uh, <laughs> as, as one of the voters. Yes, uh, we're we are all offered uh, a, a series of names in each category, and we vote for those names. So uh, any sort of nomination process is done outside of that. Uh, where the categories are, who goes in what category? That's that's completely out of my hands. Do you think it would be? Uh more wise, or if I could use an improper English term, wiser, to just get rid of categories. We don't need to categorize anybody, but just say, okay, you know, three people or five, I mean, you know, I don't know how many you could put in in the course of a year. I mean, barbecue's been around for hundreds and hundreds of years, whatever. Uh, but right. just do away with segments and just say, okay, well, here are the three or four or five people that are going to go in this year, and, and we can start that well, way. Would that make more sense? I- I think one of the reasons that there are different uh, there are different categories is just the simple fact that if there were no categories, it's the big famous names who would constantly be the ones coming up, uh, and those are generally cooks and they are generally on television. So um, yeah, that but- really precludes a lot of people who have made significant um, significant contributions to barbecue who aren't necessarily top of mind right now. But that's uh, but that's on you guys. That that's part that's but, why you're there though, right? What's that? If you that's but that's why you're there and and however many people like you are are making how many people are on the on the well, committee? That, you know, I don't actually know. Uh what? I know there's a large group of us we we vote we we all vote online. So there's not there's not debate, there's there's basically all the debate happens for the people who put the nominations together, who determine who is going to go into which group. And so at that level, I mean, I, I don't have any control over that. So, so no, I'm not the one who's going to be saying, well, this, this person or that person who has made a significant contribution should be in there. That's that, that part's already done by the time I see the ballot. But the American Royal opens up the suggestion of who could be in there to the general public, which of course, as we both know is detrimental to health. 
That's how I. That's how I got introduced to this whole thing this year. Did, did you really see my name this year? No, I did not. Oh, name. son of a! You're ruining me tonight. Man, I thought I was almost there. The precipice was in sight. Um, uh, yeah, my name wasn't on there either. So, yeah, well, um, that, that, I understand. But, but I've been in it. I, I consider myself in good company. I'm a celebrity. So, uh, but I, I guess so. My my thought is if 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 the if the industry has been around for so long, and it has, right? I mean, regardless of the TV stuff and who we know and who we see on TV, I mean, the people that are picking nominees, uh, that's where, that's the first uh, level of defense. I mean, so you don't, I mean, Guy Fieri is in the Barbecue Hall of Fame. That's a joke. He's not a barbecue guy, and I'll argue it to yeah. the very end. That I, I know why he's in there. I get it, but he should not be in there, and that that doesn't sit well with me as far as Hall of Fames and how that whole thing works. But that should be the I first line. I understand where you're coming from there. I, I certainly didn't vote that year. Yeah, <laughs> well, point taken. Um, so I think if you have a, a group of people that are us, are saying, okay, uh, Daniel and all the others, here's who you're going to be voting on, well, they should be making those people up, and they can quickly uh, def- deflect out the, the same big names and celebrities and stuff like you were talking about. But uh, I've completely sidetracked, and I apologize. Uh, so we can we can both agree All that right. Stephen Reichlin is well deserved. Absolutely, I'm right there with you on that. All right, perfect. And we we of course, and I've completely run over time, but I became so self absorbed with myself I couldn't help it. Uh, so uh, we'll have you back on again soon. We can actually talk about stuff that you want to talk about. All right. Well, sounds good. Well, I mean, we talked about barbecue, so you know. That's, that's you. stuff I like to talk about. You're the man. That's right. Uh, Daniel Vaughn is the editor, the barbecue editor for Texas Monthly. TMBBQ.com is the website. Daniel, always appreciate the time, man. We'll do it again soon. You bet. Thank you. All right, there he is. Daniel Vaughn, Texas Monthly, TMBBQ.com, the first and only barbecue editor right now. All right, there you go. Uh, wow. Okay, I'm, I'm over. I got to catch up. I'm fired up, man. I am completely jacked up. Got to back it down. Got to back it down. All right, folks. If you are like me, then you want to make sure the grilling and barbecue game is El Tapo Nacho. That means top notch in Spanish. For those of you that speak Spanish... Go to ButcherBBQ.com. Yes, do it now. Hurry, run! Save on the shipping by ordering more than $200 worth of stuff. Now, you might be thinking, oh, gee, what? Trust me, with all of these products that he has to offer, you can easily collect $200 plus and secure the free shipping. I mean, that could be worth $15 or $20 alone. You can get extra sauce with that. Now, you can get the injection stuff, right? You can get the pork injection, the beef injection, the prime injection, the bird boosters, the uh, pit flavored for the pork. Of course, you can get the grilling oils that have risen to cataclysmic fame, both in backyards and on the competition circuit as well. Every week, people are switching more and more away from the blue bottle and in to the clear slash red label bottles of grilling oils, especially with that butter stuff. I love it. They also have the ability to trade in, not only the ability, but the actual desire to help you out. If you jammed your own self up on another commercial injection, you didn't have a choice before Dave came along and implemented the trade-in link. You go to butcherbbq.com, you hit the trade-in link, you print off the label, and then you send back the remaining commercial injection, not something you just whipped up in your meth lab. But the commercial injection, up to five pounds, send it back to Dave, and he'll measure it out. His weights are final, and then he'll send you back. He'll send you back what you request from Butcher Barbecue. You can't, you just can't lose, and the wife isn't mad at you for wasting money. It's great. You can get the sweet barbecue sauce. You can get the premium rub. You can get the steak and brisket rub. For Pete's sake, get bags, five-pound bags of honey rub. That's going to go quick. That's 50% of my favorite rub ever. I mean, it's great all by itself, but I use it in conjunction with another rub. I call it the North Coast Offense. It's an inside joke with me. 
You got the Butcher's Barbecue Sweet Barbecue Sauce. It's fabulous. Go to ButcherBBQ.com. That's ButcherBBQ.com. Stock up now. Again, get over $200 worth of stuff. Take advantage of the free shipping. And you will thank me and possibly Dave later, but me because you heard about it here on this show first. All right, uh, we're back to wrap up the first hour quickly so we can stretch into the second. If you're listening and watching the Barbecue Central Show right here on the Barbecue Central Radio Networks. Big name interviews, advice on cooking brisket and ribs, and the only host willing to share his honest opinion on all things important in the world of barbecue. It's the Barbecue Central Show. All right, welcome back. 216-220-0966. Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. Your two ways to get in touch with me. Thanks again to Daniel Vaughn from Texas Monthly. He is their fully employed barbecue editor traveling the vast landscape of Texas to let you know where you should be going when you're in Texas. Obviously, plenty uh, plenty of places that he said you shouldn't be going. I can dig it. But he will not waste your time in that regard and tell you where you should be going instead. So visit tmbbq.com. That's T-M, Tango Mike, tmbbq.com. And you can get pointed in the right direction if you're going to be making one of those Texas runs, the Texas Mecca, the Texas Trail, the Texas Barbecue Trail, whatever. It's great. All right, we got a lot to get to here in the second hour. I'm going to refill my drink. I suggest you might refill your drink, just in case you were wondering. Currently, Cavaliers 70, Hawks 53. I can say it right now. It's a blowout, ladies and gentlemen. Yes! But I'm not counting my chickens before they hatch. After all, we are in Cleveland. Yeah. Stick around. This is Chad Hayden with Moose Riders Barbecue, the 19th annual Jack Daniels World Barbecue Champion, and this is Barbecue Central. From my heart and from my hand, why don't people understand my intention? Happy to have you aboard here for the really big barbecue show. We cook because we have to, and we grill because we want to. Fine, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> You have a great show. I'm a big fan. So what 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 seems to be the problem here? This man looks like he's dead, and he's in the in the crackle. Charbono, it's all about the Charbono, dude. Succulent fish. What? We ate fifty before wiener. Oh, listen, Laverne, it's shake face. I'm shaking like a dog shit peach seeds. <laughs> we have top men working on it right now. Who? Top. All right, just like that, we are into the second hour. This is the Barbecue Central Show. I am your program host, Greg Rempe. On the Barbecue Central Show, we talk about all things important in the world of barbecue. We broadcast live from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city of Cleveland, Ohio. It is the barbecue capital of the North Coast. Happy to have you aboard here. If you missed the first hour, hey, don't sweat it. Don't sweat it. I'm recording. You can get it in podcast fashion five minutes before midnight or about two hours from now. And you can get the audio archive at some point tomorrow morning. You can also check it up on the YouTubes, the outdoor cooking channels, so on and so forth. So if you missed it, you'll want to go back. We talked with Mike Fritz in the first hour. He is with the uh, more rib competition cooking team called the Pork Brothers. He's going to be in Lima, Ohio. This coming weekend, he was in Berea, Ohio last weekend, cooking the near west side, well, medium west side of Cleveland. 
and he'll be doing uh, Lima. I have no idea where Lima, Ohio is, but it's not necessarily close to Cleveland. There's a huge jail in Lima. Shout out to the prisoners keeping it down. Hold it down. Always appreciate my prisoner listeners. Prisoner mail. Prisoner barbecue mail. It's a new segment. Then we talked with Daniel Vaughn, the barbecue editor for Texas Monthly, tmbbq.com. And in the run-in of our conversation, he had alerted me, probably much to his dismay, that he sits on the voting segment of the American Royal Hall of Fame. And he had me going for one quick minute saying that I was just shy of making it onto the Hall of Fame. Decided to come clean and say, yeah, well, I mean, we didn't actually see your name. Ain't nobody got time for that. Well, I mean, why do you want to say that? You want to come on my show and give me... Hold on a sec. Triple T going up. Oh, oh, and... Oh, he didn't make it. All right, we're... Uh, is that 71 to 50 something? Wow. It's still a blowout. Let me see what ESPN says. It's 71 to 55. Wow. Man, it's great. Nothing like taking care of your current business with five minutes and 16 seconds left. Nothing like taking care of your, your, the business that you need to close out game. This is what you want to see in the close out game. I'm scrolling. Wait, so where was I? So he told me that he was on the voting, one of the voters, or I don't know. He was a little evasive on what his exact title for Hall of Fame voting is. How the hell do I not get a vote? Get that big stuff out of here. I'm influential. I'm influential as shit. I can do it. I will vote yes for you. I will do it. I love you. Yeah, I will do it. You want to be on the Hall of Fame? I will vote for you. I would do it. All right. Still to come, the weekly barbecue roundup inaugural play. Who's excited? I'm excited. I know I am. Actually, where the hell is that thing? Hmm. Let's see. Let's see. I don't know what the hell I did with that. Uh oh. Uh-oh. Gotta find that. Let's go back. Oh, oh, weekly barbecue roundup. May. There it is. All right, we'll play that here in a second. I'm gonna cue that up right now. Though, so the weekly barbecue roundup is coming up. Also, the official barbecue sauce and rub reviewer Scott Roberts will be joining us at 10:35. Open segment in about 10 minutes from now. The Sam's Club Barbecue Series rolled into St. Charles, Missouri this past weekend, a regional final. No, it's not right. That's not where it was. God. Now, I'm so disappointed in me. It was in Marietta, Georgia, and that feeds into the uh, South, South Haven regional final, which I believe is uh, September 9th. Winning that particular Marietta Potts BBQ 691. The Pit Crew Georgia, second place or reserve. Hey, look at that guy moving on, number three. Moyers Competition Barbecue Team. Shout out, Jamie. Good job. Man. Bubba Q. 687 and 3. Wow, that was really close between Moyers and Barbecue. Wow. Not even a half a point separating. Southern Thunder Barbecue, fifth and moving on, uh, rounding out the top six. Patrick Banks. <gasps> barbecue! Barbecue! You're looking at about a nine point swing from one to six, so a uh, little tighter than the last two local qualifiers. As I mentioned in the top of the first hour, the next Sam's Club event will be this coming weekend, May 30th in Hendersonville, Tennessee, a local qualifier also feeding the South Haven, Mississippi Regional. And good luck to, uh, good luck to all those competing. 
All right, uh, here we go for the very first time, a fully produced segment by me called the Weekly Barbecue Roundup. I will include Texas going forward, assuming uh, my man Doug Scheiding hooks me up because I can't hook myself up because, quite frankly, I don't have the wits. But uh, check this out. Let me know what you think. Welcome to the first installment of the Weekly Competition Roundup. We're going to be covering KCBS and FBA this week. If you are in a sanctioning body, regular results, and you'd like me to include you on this weekly update, please shoot me an email, greg at thebbqcentralshow.com. This review covering May 22nd through May 23rd in the KCBS Best Damn Barbecue, Boulder City, Nevada, winning that one. Mar BQ's Barbecue with a 700.02. Congratulations to them. Red, white, and blue day one in Westmont, Illinois. The winner of that one, Mud's BBQ with a score of 681.68. Barbecue Blues and Brews on the Bay, North Bend, Oregon, winning that one. Rooftop Barbecue with a 698.32. The 34th annual Kennett JC Show Me State Barbecue Cookoff in Kennett, Missouri, winning that one. Rural Root Barbecue with a 695.38 table rock and ribs GC receives golden ticket to the World Food Championships in Kimberlin City, Missouri, winning that one getting basted with a 695.95. Lewisburg Rotary Club Barbecue Cookoff in Lewisburg, Tennessee, winning that one Warren County Pork Choppers with a 710.27. Wow. And then the Sam's Club National Barbecue Tour in Marietta, Georgia, winning that one Potts Barbecue with a 691.34. Papa Joe's Banjo Barbecue in Evans, Georgia, winning that one Clark Crew Barbecue with a score of 696. Then we have the Red White Barbecue Day 2. That's right, it was a doubleheader winning that one a fine swine with 692.61. The Rock City Rib Fest in Crapchester, New York. I can say that I was from around there back in the old days. It was Old Virginia Smoke with a 683.39 taking the day. And then the Tony Stone Low and Slow Barbecue Competition winning that one. Bunch of Swines with a 688.04. Then the Sugar Mound Barbecue Festival in Mound City, Kansas, winning that one. Getting Sauced with a 691.45. And then finally in the KCBS this weekend, Smoking in the Junction in West Des Moines, Iowa. Smokers Purgatory pulling off the win with a 688.52. Now we move on to the FBA showing one event that took place, 523. And winning that one, Bull Rush Barbecue with a 789.11. That does it for your first in Salmon of the Weekly Barbecue Roundup. And now back to more of me on the show live. Hey, how about me? Let me have the intro back into me. Yeah. Nothing like me introducing me to give you more of me, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. So that's the Weekly Barbecue Roundup. I'm going to be doing that, uh, putting it together, assembling it, or as we call it in the biz, producing it every Sunday evening, and uh, again, I hope to have Texas included in there as well. So if you like it, if you don't like it, love to have you weigh in on it. Quick review of the winners of the week. Winner of the weekend, I guess. You know, let me know. Let me know what you think. I would love to hear it. I would love it. All right, folks, let me talk to you quickly about the longest-running sponsor of the show, the Barbecue Guru. Makers of automatic pit temperature control devices for your cookers. If you've been thinking about getting one, especially for Father's Day, stop here. They are the creators of this technology. Why are you going to buy from anyone else? I don't know. Quite frankly, there's no rational sense to buy from anybody else except the barbecue guru. If you're not familiar with how these little beauties work, I'm not going to get into the minute detail, but imagine a product that allows you to set your pit temperature in one set, keeps it running at that set temperature all the way through the cook. Sounds too good to be true? It's not. It's real life. You can take advantage of this technology today. Maybe you are a busy working professional, or perhaps you are constantly on the run with kids and doing errands, and quite frankly, you just don't have that time to set around and tend pit temperatures. I get it. Barbecue Guru allows you to throw on a pork butt or a brisket or a couple slabs of ribs, and then you're off to do whatever it is you need to get done. The Barbecue Guru maintains that pit temperature you set it at. There are currently four different models to choose from, so... You know that one will fit what you need and will fit your budget. You have the CyberQ Wi-Fi. allows you to control up to two different pits. Internally monitor four meats at the same time. 
If you have a smart device, a tablet, a phone, a netbook, tablet, whatever, you can connect wirelessly. You don't even have to go outside anymore to make pit temperature adjustments. You can do it all from the convenience of your smart device that's hooked into the CyberQ Wi-Fi. All the way on the other end of that, the Party Q, $149 for most cookers. Easiest point of entry into pit temperature control device. Dumb. Pit temperature control device. Though. Self-contained package. It runs on AA batteries. can go from cooker to cooker to cooker. It's great. You'll love it. It's a cruise control for your pit. If you need a pit, look at the Onyx up. Fully accomplished in backyards and on competition circuits. It's insulated. It holds a lot of meat. It accommodates the half and full pans for food service. Obviously, you know it's going to work seamlessly with any of the barbecue guru pit temperature control devices you put on it. Do yourself a favor, head on over to the bbqguru.com and check out their products. If you have any questions about what to order, call them directly. 800 288 Guru. That's 800 288 G U R U. They'll make sure you're outfitted with exactly what you need to get you up and running right out of the box. 800 288 G U R U. Or visit the bbqguru.com. The Barbecue Guru is a breakthrough in barbecue technology. It's an open segment. If you want to talk about something, if you have been dying to talk about something, if you want to unload on me about something, your chance to do it. 216-220-0966. We're back right after this. Stick around. Broadcasting live from the Barbecue Central Radio Network Studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. All right, welcome back. 216-220-0966. Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com, your number to get in touch with me. This is the segment to do it, as I've been talking. Don't worry about me not looking at the camera and watching the Cavs game. I'm really not. I swear to God. I'm, I would never do that. I would never, on purpose, look away from my audience. Oh, he turned it over. Idiot. Ah, uh, cripes. I'm sorry. I would never deliberately look past you and watch one games in Cleveland history. Uh, score update, Atlanta 60, Cleveland 83. No, we're losing our lead of 23 points. Wow. 56 seconds. Get that weak stuff. Out. Get that stuff out That's right. Tristan Thompson with a game up by 23 with less than a minute left to go in the third quarter. I'm liking it. All right, so let's uh, let's slow it down here, ladies and gentlemen. It's an open segment. We've got some things to cover. If you want to jump in tonight, maybe you uh, took part in a competition, you saw something odd that you'd like to let everybody know about, or who knows? You know, it's gossip time here on the show. Feel free to jump in, 216-220-0966. You can email me as well, greg at thebbqcentralshow.com. For the folks that are watching uh, the live video feed, does anybody notice that, I, I can't tell if it's just my software doing this, but sometimes I look a lot more smooth moving. Like right now I seem a little choppy. Uh, but I don't know if that's just here locally on my computer or if that's a situation that you guys see in and out too. I have noticed as I have been keenly reviewing each and every show here over the last three or four weeks, and I don't know what the hell I did, but I fixed the hot volume issue that we were running into for like three or four months. I fixed it. I have no idea what I did. But fixed it. But I fixed that for you. I did. I fixed that. It was great. Let's see. How do I do that? No, I can't do that. i to figure out how I can make the... Oh, that might work. Hold on a second. Hello. Hello. I'm talking to you. Hello. Hello. I can't. I. Hello. Yes, hello. I'm talking to you on the phone. Do I talk like I'm on, I'm on the phone? Thank you.
All right, now I can add the bass. Oh, I didn't add the I turned up the mid. That's what I want. I want the bass, baby. Yeah. Probably don't need to be that loud. I'm a bullhorn. Nothing's got an alarm. Man, I have not had to replace batteries. I thought that thing was going to be like one of the coolest things ever. I was going to use it all the time. Luckily, I didn't spend like more than $20 on it. So in the end, I win in that regard. But geez, talk about best laid plans. Uh, 216-220-0966. Greg at the BBQ Central Show dot com. Uh, we did discuss drinks for the hot barbecue month coming up ahead. You know, uh, I'm going to go off topic here just a little bit. Again, if you want to jump in tonight, more than happy to have you, especially right now as we're open here for this segment. We do have Scott Roberts coming up. In about 20 minutes from now, 25 minutes from now, 216-220-0966, Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. Greg, who made that list? Matt, I don't know what list you're talking about. There's many lists. I'm more than happy to answer the question once I understand it fully. Are you talking about the Hall of Fame list? I only know one name if that's who it is. I'll, I'll wait for you. Uh, the drink list. The drink list? What list is that? Oh, no. I've been drinking too much already. Oh, God. What uh, What drink list was I discussing? Does anybody know what Matt is talking about? Matt, have you been drinking? Is that what it is? Oh, no. So, uh, again, I'm sorry, 216-220-0966, Greg at the BBQ Central Show dot com. If you want to jump in via the email instead of calling, I know some people are a little uh, trepidatious on calling in for whatever reason. I mean, that's fine. I dig it. Now, if you didn't know, this past Saturday... I was invited to go on the John Williams show on Chicago's Blowtorch, Blowtorch, by the way, WGN radio, and gave some quick barbecue tips for the Memorial Day weekend. Uh, We'll hold off that here in a second. Uh, Go ahead, call. You're on the air. Hey, Greg. It's Matt. Matt? The the pairing the barbecue with the uh, beer glue. With the beer, what? You had that. You went through that list of pairing uh, beers with the barbecue oh. for the summer. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. You know what? It ended up being a Canadian list, if you can believe it or not. Get that big stuff out of here. I mean, who drinks Canadian beer? Well, definitely with the beers they chose, because the Sasan is like a really heavy, a lot of times raisiny or raspberry beer. I was like, oh, really? <laughs> raisiny beer. Yeah, uh, oh. Sawfish makes a Sasan raz, uh, raisin beer. Is that something that you can get in America? Yes. Yes, uh. it's, um, it's thicker. Oh, boy. I wouldn't recommend it for barbecue. A great barbecue beer is a, a Shandy. Uh, with lemon in it? It's actually um, traditionally made by the bartender or made at your house with uh, a little bit of Sprite, lemonade, and then a good ale. Uh, Sprite? Yes. Okay, give me the give me a recipe. Uh, you want to pour half a glass of of a good ale that you like, like uh, Budweiser. No. <laughs> what? Uh, You're wrong, Matt. By the way, but go ahead. Well, well, you could you could go with um um and and don't don't get me wrong. You could go with a Bud uh, Bud Light, uh, but a Budweiser is a little too sweet when you mix in the uh, the lemonade. It's going to cut it a little weird. But you're going to want something more like a uh, like a light ale. Um, and then you're going to mix in on the on top of that, and you're going to cut it depending on how bitter you want it. it is half lemonade, half um, ginger ale or Sprite. Uh, well, now, so what is it? Is it ginger ale or Sprite? Because those flavor profiles are completely different. I would I, like I would put ginger ale in with my bourbon for a highball, but I wouldn't put Sprite in with my bourbon. Well, if you're going the traditional, um, the traditional shandy would have been a ginger ale. The more common one you'll oh. find in the United States will be a Sprite. 
So, but I mean, like that uh, line in Kugel Summer Shandy that everybody was drinking hand over fist like three or four years ago. I mean, they're probably not using ginger ale or anything, right? They're probably just using some fake lemon pledge shit. Yeah, correct. They're, yeah, they're pre mixed and that. Just like, you know, like Bartles and Jean strawberry daiquiri is definitely not made with rum and strawberry daiquiri mix. So it's half a beer. And then what were the other two mixer parts? Yeah, uh, some sort of spritzer, and then a uh, then a lemonade. And can it be like a country time lemonade? Is there like a, a specific lemonade you should really look to use that works best? Uh, actually, I think it's called Simply yes. Lemonade, the one that's in the yep, uh, yep. right by the orange juice. Yep, I know exactly what you're talking about. Simply Lemonade, and then how many parts of ginger ale and how many parts of the lemonade after the beer? Uh, it's going to be a quarter and a quarter. So half beer, half quarter, uh, half of ah, the, uh, got it. you know, so, and that, that'll give you a real nice refreshing, um, you know, refreshing beverage to go with your barbecue out there in the sun. Matt, you are a wealth of beer knowledge. Dare I say a beer nerd? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. I can appreciate that. I love it. Matt, I love it. I know. I love it. I love beer and I love having beer nerds on my show. I would love you. You got Thanks, nothing? Greg. Anytime you need help. All right, man. Thank you. Look at this guy. Matt's the man. So you dropped Tracy Morgan on Matt, and he was like, I got to get off the phone right now. I got to get off right now. <laughs> Go, Matt, I told you I would love it. I want to have one. I want to have a thumb of shandy with ginger ale and beer and lemonade. Simply lemonade. I would love it. I would love to get it for you. I would make it. Come to my house. I will make it for you. We will enjoy it. It will be lovely. All right. So thanks again to Matt. Uh, John Dawson weighing in with a summer shandy. I mean, who? Of course, this guy's got summer shandy. Raging closet alcohol. Just kidding. Uh, Quick recipe for a light refreshing cocktail that is perfect for outdoor entertaining around the grill or barbecue eight ounces unfiltered wheat ale this person used shock top belgian white i like shock top a lot two slices limon quarter inch thick Mm, now we're starting to diverge one half ounce vodka whoa what Six ounce ginger beer slash ale. This guy used AJ Steffen's ginger beer. Wait, not this guy. Is this you, John? You make this drink? Muddle one slice lemon and vodka. Strain into 16 ounce pub glass. Add the beer and ginger ale or beer. Serve garnished with slice of lemon and enjoy. Makes one serving. Hmm. I wonder. I'm. In, I gotta tell you, man. I'm intrigued about vodka in the beer. Not only that. Let me raise you a question, John. Since we're talking about uh, shandies, all of a sudden here on the show. Um, I just found. I believe it's called Deep Johnny. Uh, lemon vodka, and it is one of the most realistically flavored lemon vodka. I mean, you know, once you get into, uh, man, we're about ready to go up by 30 points here. It's awesome. Um, once you get in, because once you get into flavored stuff, you know, especially the fruit, it can get real fake tasting real quick, and there's nothing more that I hate than fake pineapple taste or fake orange taste or fake lemon taste. If I want fake fruit taste, I'll eat hard candy suckers. Those blow. They're they're terrible. Fake strawberries, one of the worst. This lemon vodka is phenomenal. It is absolutely phenomenal. So my question to John is this. Is it going over the edge if I use... One and a half ounce of the lemon flavored vodka, or is it going to be too lemony if I'm muddling the slice of limon with the limon vodka? Right, that's what I want to know. Is it is that too much? Le- 
And then uh, I ha- I don't want to be the picker of nits, as you laugh, John. Ginger ale and ginger beer might even be urgent in flavor profile than Sprite and ginger ale. Ginger beer is uh, cloudy white. Ginger ale, golden, effervescent, clear. Completely different. T- I would never, and I repeat, never put ginger beer in my bourbon. I would always put ginger ale in my bourbon when I'm making. I would, I would never put ginger beer. But if I'm making a Moscow Mule, I would never put ginger ale. I will put ginger beer in it. Wow. Good news, folks. We're all going to be checking into the uh, alcohol rehab, ladies and a little later. <laughs> All right, so we have uh, two different shandies for your sipping pleasure. Half of a beer, half of an ale, according to Matt. Half a beer, uh, then one quarter le- lemonade, uh, the Simply simply Lemonade. They also make the Simply Orange uh, orange Juice, Simply Lemonade, and the quarter spritzer, ginger ale or Sprite, you decide. And then you have John Dawson's Summer Shandy Cooler, eight ounces uh, White ale, shock top he used, uh, two slices lemon, one and a half ounce vodka, and six ounces ginger beer or ale. Uh, again, I will go on record as saying uh, you're going to get two distinctly different summer shandy coolers if you use ginger beer or ginger ale, and I would not mix the two, by the way. That could be a fight in your mouth. So, everybody try them, and there you go. Screw the vodka. Use the real deal lemon cello. Nah, nah. I would never drink limoncello. I don't sound like a man. I would never do it. I would never do it. I'm not drinking limoncello. Forget it. I'm a man, baby. I'm a man, John Dawson. Patio daddy o. Where? I mean, where the hell would you even get limoncello? I'm never asking for that. I would never ask for it. Never. Uh, sir, can I help you find something? Yes, I'm looking for the limoncello. Does anybody have limoncello over here? I need it for my summer shandy. <laughs> no, not over here you don't. Get your ass out of my store, mister. Forget it. Shock Top is Budweiser. Blue Moon is Coors. Yes, I know. Uh, I would know especially about Shock Top. That's because I went through the... Uh, St. Louis, Missouri's Budweiser facility and had a beer pairing, like eight courses. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Go to Italy. Don't tell me where to go. Don't tell me where to go, Doug. We'll fight. You'll win, but we'll fight. Uh, Let me see here. I don't know how much, how long this played for. Oh, it's six minutes. I got six minutes on WGN. Can you believe it? Rempe said he'd help us. He's the host of the Barbecue Central Show on YouTube, and you can follow him online at thebarbecuecentralshow.com. Hey, welcome to the show. You're on WGN. I'm John Williams. How are you? Hey, Don Greg, and I appreciate you having me on today. I'm, am- I'm amazed you even have time for me, Greg. I would imagine either you're cooking or talking to people about cooking today. As luck would have it, there's uh, six slabs of ribs on the Green Mountain Grill as we speak. Oh, what kind of grill do you use? The Green Mountain? That's not the Green Egg. That's a Green Mountain grill? Yeah, the Green Mountain cooker is a pellet-fed or pellet-fired cooker. Uh, But, of course, you're talking to a guy that has relatively uh, 8 to 10 cookers, grills, smokers at any given time. So that's the one I'm using today because of its capacity. And is it – and so you're doing ribs. Are you doing pork or beef ribs? Uh, pork ribs today, uh, I mean, I'm a huge fan of beef ribs. If you can get the really big, they call them the dino bones, which are the uh, beef chuck short ribs. Uh, those are fantastic, but it's uh, pork ribs wins today for sure. Do you parboil them, or do you just slow cook what? them for a long time? Yes, uh, parboil, and then I'll take you out back and get the really big, Did you hear what the he dino just said? bones, which are the uh, beef chuck Pay short attention. ribs. Uh, those are fantastic, but it's uh, pork ribs wins today for sure. All right, pay attention to what this guy says. This is why you have experts like me on WGN Blowtorch in Chicago. Listen to listen to the question he's about to ask me. 
Do you parboil them, or do you just slow cook what? them for a long time? <laughs> yes, uh, parboil, and then I'll take you out back and shoot you in the head. I mean, are you kidding me? Oh. If you're parboiling ribs, we're going to be at odds for life. Uh, it was, it was just a question, Greg. I swear to God, I didn't mean anything oh by goodness. it. Somebody call I security. We we're going to be uh, rioting in the street like we might be doing in <laughs> Cleveland later, but nevertheless. <laughs> so, okay, I'll just make a little note. Greg said... Don't. All right, so there's John. That's just a section of my interview that I did with John Williams, not the famous conductor, by the way. But uh, he's a Saturday host from uh, 1 to 3 Central, I believe it is. So uh, 2 to 5 Eastern Standard Time. WGN Radio, uh, WGN.com, I believe it is. Uh, but you can go to my website, thebbqcentralshow.com. It's the most recent post up there, WGN Interview Today. Uh, that was posted uh, uh, maybe yesterday, but I did it on Saturday. I mean, can you believe... Can you believe that that guy said, do you parboil ribs? What? Who asked that question? Who asked that question to a barbecue guy? That's like when Kevin, what's his name, from the host of Barbecue Pitmaster one season said that he parboiled them. Man, did he catch it for that? I think that was pretty much the end of his uh, barbecue career there. Wayne, you boil your ribs? Oh, boy. I told the host at WGN, parboil your ribs and I'm going to shoot you in your face. I said it. I said that. All right, folks, let me talk to you quickly about the good folks over at Suckle Busters. That's right, preferred by competition barbecue cooks, Texas-based, 100% made in the USA. Products have won 100 if not one thousands of awards, including first places at the American Royal Barbecue Sauce Contest. How about a new product from Suckle Busters we've been giving away for free here on the show? Honey Barbecue Glaze and Finishing Sauce. That's right, based on Suckle Busters' award-winning Honey Barbecue Sauce. This is a thin barbecue glaze and finishing sauce. Specially made for competition ribs and chicken. Super sweet, not spicy, but super red. They use a special American paprika for a bright red color. Brush it on. The last five to ten minutes of cooking, it'll leave a nice glossy red sheen on the meat and an extra layer of sweet flavor. Take your competition ribs to a whole nother level. The chicken, too. Available at local barbecue stores. Online, of course, at SuckleBusters.com. If you have not won it yet and you would like to try a free bottle of honey barbecue glaze and finishing sauce from suckle busters email me right now on the subject line well email greg at the bbq central show.com you see it right there see it right there greg at the bbq central show.com and in the subject line put parboil ribs parboil ribs you can win a bottle of the suckle busters honey barbecue glaze and finishing sauce i have used it a number of times it's good I mean, for me, I always like a little bit more twang. can always use a little bit more vinegar. If it's over vinegar, I'm a more of a fan. But it runs the fine line, and it does put on a nice color for sure. It is sweet, too. Sucklebusters.com. That's sucklebusters.com. You can call them 972-393-9509. 972-393-9509. Sales at sucklebusters.com sales at sucklebusters.com or visit the main website sucklebusters.com take that chicken and rib to a whole nother level thanks to dan arnold and the folks over sucklebusters we'll be back with the official sauce and rub reviewer of the show scott roberts right after this stick around we'll be right back Name interviews, advice on cooking brisket and ribs, and the only host willing to share his honest opinion on all things important in the world of barbecue. It's the Barbecue Central Show. Who? 
Who would have thought? All right, we are back. 216-220-0966. Greg at the BBQ Central Show dot com. Oh, that's Where's my guy? Here he is. Uh, if you want to jump in, use those two ways. Matt, I hear you, man. We might we might be doing a, uh, a beer and barbecue segment. We might. You never know. Uh, joining me now. Wait, wait. Let me get this in. This portion of the Barbecue Central Show brought to you by CookinPellets.com, your number one source for quality wood pellets for all of your pellet-driven cookers. Visit CookinPellets.com. That's CookinPellets.com for more information or to purchase you can also visit a little website called Amazon.com to purchase as well. Uh, joining me right now to help me close the show, a monthly contributor, the official Barbecue Central sauce and rub reviewer, Scott Roberts, joining me on the show. Scott, how are you, buddy? Doing fantastic. How you doing, Greg? You got video tonight or no? Actually, I do have video tonight. Well, hit the button, dude. Oh, how do we hit the button on here once you it's already call me the here? Let's try this here. Hey, you see me? He's a handsome man, ladies and gentlemen. Hi. I, would, I would go on a date with you. I would do it. Scott, what's up, man? Oh, nothing much. Huh? Just uh, getting through a crazy, busy life. And it seems like we're, like, skipping months here. I mean, things have just been so busy and hectic here. Yeah, it's, uh, a, it's a little more every other month than it has been every month. But, I mean, uh, you know, don't feel bad. Dr. Barbecue has been, you know, kind of every other month as well. But this is, like, a busy time for everybody. So I'm just happy when I can get you when I can get you. Oh, I always love being on here. Let's see if uh, – from uh, this point on, we can uh, do this monthly. All right, I, I will do my part to make sure that I'm touching base with everybody, and we'll uh, we'll make sure that we we have you back up at least on my side. We'll have you back up uh, once a month, depending on what your schedule is like. It's a commitment. Oh, it definitely is. Right. I don't know how you could do it week in and week out for years. I try a live show for two hours. It's I try. crazy. All right, uh, so uh, Scott Roberts joining us. Of course, everybody knows Scott as the official. Sauce and Rub Reviewer here for the Barbecue Central Show. But, of course, you can also find him at scottrobertsweb.com. He is steeped and grown into the fiery foods industry as well, an expert there, um, uh, but like by seismic and gargantuan proportions. Uh, so as far as the hot stuff is going, Scott, any new news or any breaking details or anything that's really hot going on right now? Uh, nothing really. Uh, years past, I've reported on the hottest peppers and things like that. Nothing new is brewing uh, from that side of things. So, I'm again, I'm just kind of looking for great flavor combinations that utilizes the heat of some of these hotter peppers. But I don't want heat just for heat's sake. And it's something I've said for many, many years. I don't want just a burn. I want great flavor to go with it, too. That's right. Good burn, good flavor, and uh, that's what you're looking at. So tonight, instead of doing... You know, two new sauces and a rub. Uh, we decided we would kind of go back and, A, talk about wing sauce because I think as any true barbecuer would tell you that there is probably a good size arsenal of, well, maybe not arsenal, but they love to we love to consume uh, buffalo-style chicken wings in some form or fashion. And why not go back to the old tried-and-true anchor bar hot wing sauce uh, and or deviations of it? I make the original Anchor Bar Wing Sauce, if you can believe it or not. I have the recipe. And now you, you – uh, that type of recipe is typically a very thin vinegar-based uh, Louisiana-style hot sauce and butter. Uh, but there are a lot of great wing sauces, and they will have that really base tangy flavor, but yep. they just add so much more creaminess, just so much more that they bring to the game than that. Uh, I've kind of outgrown that Anchor Bar style sauce myself. Were you too good for me? Oh, I, I think so. All right. No, I'm not saying it's I don't want to date bad. you anymore. It, it, it I don't want to date you. All right. Yeah. So I love, <laughs> I mean, I love it. So I have, you know, a stick of butter. I have 12 ounces of Frank's Red Hot original, not the wing sauce, but the Frank's Red Hot sauce, yes, as I'm sure yes. you know. Uh, it's a staple. And then I have some uh, some kind of vinegar in there, and I have some kind of other spices that I can't tell anybody. And, man, it is good, but I think to me, you just would splash on the Frank's Red Hot and call it a buffalo wing. But if you don't add some of the spices and that stick of butter, I mean, that adds that creaminess and uh, the balance of, of butter flavor that complements the Frank's Red Hot so well. Man, people love that shit at my house. It's like gangbusters. 
Oh, you know what? When people make a sauce like that, it could be very, very good. A lot of people I know will just take that thin, watery, vinegary sauce, add just a little bit of butter, and it just – I don't know. It, it's still kind of – is runny and yeah. drippy. The, the stuff is dripping off. It really doesn't adhere to the chicken wing that well. I'm not a fan of that. I want some really deep uh, stickability to that chicken, the, the, the real rich creaminess. And uh, a couple of the sauces I'm going to be reviewing tonight will have that, thankfully. All right, so let's get into that. We're talking with Scott Roberts. The first sauce that you're going to be talking about is called Rippin' Red Wing Sauce. Yes, uh, one that I discovered about five years ago by uh, a good friend of mine named John Rosati. Uh, he is uh, – I got the bottle right up here. I have to remember to do all this again here. It's been a while. Um, he is trying to create something that is uh, thicker, and I will really emphasize that clingability to food. And he's really hit a home run with this type of sauce. Now, there are a couple different variations of the sauce. There's the regular mild, and there's the hot one. And to me, there's not much different in the fl- difference in the flavor profile between the two. As a matter of fact, not much difference in the heat. If you're just a complete wimp, go for the milder one. <laughs> if you love a little bit of spice, go for the hot. It's not going to completely burn your mouth out. Uh, but it, it is it does have probably uh, what I consider to be on my scale a nice medium heat. Uh, the thing about ripping red wing sauce, I think it, it really, really suits uh, grilled and smoked wings the best. Now, with fried wings, uh, how the Anchor Bar originally did it and how a lot of people will make it at home, it, I do think that that is the Achilles heel to this. It's not as good as it could be like that. But you get some wings, put some really good all-purpose Barbecue rub on them, smoke the wings, grill them, and then put some of this uh, rip and red sauce the last couple of minutes of the cook. Let it thicken up. Uh, and let it caramelize, and it is just an amazing thing to eat. So uh, do that. Grill or smoke with this, and you will find a winner with this. Yeah, I love uh, – I call it the smoke – I I guess hijack a term from – uh, now new Hall of Famer, Stephen Reichland, smoke-roasted wings. So I use the full wing. Um, I cut the little tip off, uh, but then I have you know the drumette and the, the leg, and I leave them attached. I cut a little path in between the joint there to, to separate them out a little bit more, and then they're on the cooker. I season it with the, uh, the I call the North, uh, the North Coast offense. So it's 50% uh, honey rub from Butcher's Barbecue, as you're a fan of, mm-hmm. I know. And then it's also 50% of uh, Big Pop Smoker's Sweet Money Rub. So, you know, it's, uh, it's a good balance. Believe it or not, you would think hearing uh, honey rub and sweet money it would money be too sweet. Uh, but for some reason, they work harmoniously together, and you put them on the smoker. And I run them on the Green Mountain Grill a little higher than normal to kind of crisp them up as best I can. But I'm not mm-hmm. looking to get you know, like full crisp action. And then I just you know put the sauce on them. So I agree with you. The smoke roasted wing or the grilled wing is way more flavorful than just dropping them in a vat of grease like you'd get some wing joint. Uh, definitely. And if people, and there's probably a lot of people listening. You know, they're into barbecuing. You know, the big meats. But if you haven't grilled or smoked. Uh, chicken wings, you're missing out on a whole new world. Just uh, the char flavor, the smoke flavor, the the charcoal just permeating uh, the, the the skin of the wing and everything like that. It's just amazing. Absolutely. Uh, all right, so tell me where we can get the sauce, uh, price point, and how much you get of it. Okay, uh, it comes in an eight, or I'm sorry, twelve ounce bottle for eight bucks, and you can find Rip and Red Wing Sauce over at HotSauceHome.com. And, uh, of course, uh, shipping costs uh, need to be tacked on to that. I would say it's very well worth it, again, if you're going to go the, the grilling, the barbecue route. And the overall rating I would give for this is a top 10 call. Absolutely. All right. So that's good. Uh, now, do you get, like, the more you buy, do you get any type of a shipping discount? Do you buy a case and save? Or is it, you know, one bottle or, or eight bottles or whatever, it's still going to be kind of a, an upward shipping cost? 
I think at this point they need to update the website. They still have some specials from a while back that they haven't taken off of there. Uh, last time I looked, there wasn't any special shipping deals, you know, multi packs or anything like that. So uh, maybe I will give John Rosati, the owner of Rip and Red, you know, a, a shout and, and tell him, hey, you know, that there's probably going to be some people coming over to the site, get it updated, and maybe he'll have a special or two. All right. Sounds good. Uh, so the next one is Sean's Booyah, not so hot, traditional buffalo wing sauce. Mm-hmm. And uh, Sean Buya is one of those companies who've just kind of exploded in the past few years. They enter a lot of different uh, sauce contests and have really cleaned up in that regard. They have some good, like uh, basic flavors that appeals to the general populace, uh, and I think that is how they're able to uh, just uh, please a lot of palates, a lot of mouths. Uh, for the most part, I like a lot of the products. Now, this buffalo wing sauce, the not-so-hot one, is more of a tangy tomato-based sauce. Uh, to me, that's not so much a traditional buffalo wing sauce. So I, I don't know where they kind of get that. Of course, on the, the bottle I'm looking here, I don't see where they call it traditional, but you know, I'm, I'm not going to get all picky with that. Uh, but, but again, this is more of a uh, kind of a rich, maybe even uh, – Hints of a barbecue sauce mixed in with the wing sauce. So this is not your really super spicy, tangy, traditional buffalo wing sauce. This is more of a peppery, tomato, acidic type flavor to it. Uh, Because of that, it it really didn't appeal to me as much. But I think where – how I was to get this to kind of uh, sing on my tongue was add ranch or blue cheese. Mm. And, you know, I'm not a huge fan of blue cheese all the time, but add blue cheese to some of these wings and you get a really good combination. So that really, really saves it. I love blue cheese, by the way. And the chunkier, mm-hmm. the better, and the bitter, oh, the yes. better for me. I mean, it's if you haven't had buffalo wings and you've been scared of the blue cheese for whatever, these two uh, pieces work harmoniously together. They do well, and this is a great sauce with blue cheese as opposed to some of the other tangier sauces. So if you're going to pick up a bottle of this and try it, uh, you'll definitely want to use the blue cheese and just uh, see what you think of it. But I I thought it was pretty good with that. All right. Where can you get it? How much is it and how much do you get of it? Okay. Uh, It's found at the Sean's Booyah site. It's Sean's Booyah, which is B-O-O-Y-A. H dot com. Uh, a little pricey. It's twelve ninety nine for a thirteen ounce bottle plus shipping. Not a very good value. Um, I'm, I think there might be some other websites on the web, maybe an Amazon or something like that. You could pick up a better deal. Uh, maybe even you know a multi pack of this. If you're going to do that, definitely search it out. To try to find those types of deal to make it worth your money to make it a good value. Uh, my overall rating would be a backyard griller. All right, so uh, one step down from the well, – wait, is that one step down or two steps down? That would be one step down from yeah, the top ten. One step so down. So it would be uh, three out of five. Yeah, so running so pretty good rating. Yeah, not too bad. Um, all right, so mm-hmm. the last one, that was uh, Sean's Booyah, not-so-hot traditional buffalo wing sauce. Um, the last one that we have tonight is DEFCON Defense Condition 2. So if you're just looking at it by name, some of the pansies might be getting a little worried. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we all know that a sharp marketing name helps things uh, move along as well. So what can you tell us about the DEFCON sauce? DEFCON company run by my friend John Dilly. He's great with the marketing. Uh, you, you'll find him at a hot sauce show. He'll be dressed up, and he calls it like a Mad Max combined with the matrix just the, the the weird you know laser lights and fiber optics and all that really gets the people coming in but you know what it's it's not just a flashy light show or anything like this this sauce is absolutely amazing matter of fact i've gone on the record many times to say this is my favorite wing sauce of all time all time all time wow. other con- other contenders have come up and challenged it and have made a pretty good running uh, as far as uh, possibly making me change my mind, but I will always come back to this. It's just an amazing, an amazing sauce. Uh, the bottle I have have right here for the video viewers is a 32-ounce Galactus size, <laughs> and that's what I keep in my refrigerator at all times because I do love it. It's 
great with just about everything buffalo related you know chicken sandwiches chicken tenders as well as wings has one of the most amazing spectacular creamy rich buffalo wing flavor that just cannot be duplicated and there's actual wow. cream uh, in the ingredients list, and I think that gives it just uh, an unparalleled richness that everybody falls in love with this stuff. Uh, it goes great with grilled smoked wings, fried wings, you name it. It's just a great all-purpose sauce. If anyone has not tried it, definitely run out and get some today. All right. Well, how do you get some today? How much is it today, and how much do you get of it today? Okay. It's found at DefconSauces.com. Uh, the uh, there's different size bottles. The smallest one is a little six ounce. Uh, looks like a almost like a medicine bottle. You can get that for six fifty. I would go ahead and spring for something you know like I had here, the big thirty two ouncer for eighteen bucks. Well worth it. Just an absolutely amazing product. Uh, if this isn't a grand champion product, I don't know what is. Really? So we're grand championing it. Oh, absolutely. Wow. It may be, I would call it a Hall of Fame product. Hall of Fame. We're adding yes. a new category to yeah, A new category, yes. Living Legend <laughs> Hot Sauce, right? Yes. Wow. Yes. All right. So uh, how much does the, the Super Galactic size cost? Uh, 18 bucks plus shipping. Oh, so nothing. Oh, I mean, yeah. It's, it's, I, I get it. Get it. You will love it, and you will find... You, you'll make excuses to cook wings and, you know, fried chicken and grilling this and that just to be able to use it. All right. Well, I mean, it's if it's that much of a winner for you uh, and it's only 18 or 19 bucks to get the super galactic size, I mean, why not uh, bone out for that one? Absolutely. By the way, uh, breaking news, Scott. Cleveland Cavaliers 118, Atlanta Hawks 88. We sweep the Hawks and we're going to the finals, baby. Yeah. Like, I mean, nobody cares, right? No. We have LeBron and you don't, and so everybody's pissed. I get it. Uh, Scott Roberts can be found at scottrobertsweb.com. Uh, you can keep up with him there and see what he's uh, tasting and testing and reporting on the hot stuff. Also, you can find him here, as we promised each other, uh, once a month, uh, reviewing the sauces and the rub. Scott, always appreciate the time, man. Thanks for coming out. Okay, thank you very much, Greg. You got it. There he is, Scott Roberts, Scott Roberts Web. Dot com is his place of uh, online business. So if you want to keep up with Scott, that's the place you're going to want to visit. And as I had mentioned, uh, the Cavs making it to the finals. That's right. We made it. We made it to the finals. We're going back. We're bringing a championship back home to C-Town, baby. We like it's me. Rachel Nichols is interviewing Matthew Della Vadova. Dirtiest player in the game, Reggie Miller writes. Suck it. And suck it double. All right. Want to celebrate National Barbecue Month? Need an idea for a great gift for Dad? How about a cook shack, smoker, or pellet grill? Make Dad a barbecue genius with our easy-to-use smokers and pellet grills. Now until June 12th, you can save 10% off the list price of any cook shack, residential electric smoker, Fast Eddie's by Cook Shack, FEC 100, or Pellet Grills. That's a savings of up to $419, depending on the unit. The Smokette, the Smokette Elite, the Super Smoker Elite, the AmeriQ, are the electric smokers that make it easy to add real wood smoke to your foods. They're inexpensive to operate, energy efficient. PG 1000 and 500 Pellet Grills feature four-zone cooking and pellet broil technology. The FEC 100 is the choice of many championship barbecue teams guaranteed to hold enough barbecue for all your friends and family. All their products come with a no-risk, 30-day, use-it-as-much-as-you-want money-back guarantee. To order on this, use promo code BBQMONTH, one word, BBQMONTH, when you check out at CookShack.com or call CookShack at 800-423-0698 until the friendly sales staff you want the BBQ Month deal. With a Cook Shack smoker or pellet grill, you can celebrate barbecue every day. Hurry, because this deal ends Friday, June 12th. 800-423-0698 or cookshack.com. But either way you do it, make sure you mention promo code BBQ Month. You can save up to $419, depending on what unit you get. Sale ending June 12th, so a couple weeks. 
We'll be back with that next week. Do it now. Call. Tell them you listen to the show. Tell them you support the show. Tell them you support them supporting the show and you appreciate all that good stuff. We're back to wrap up the show right after this. Stick around. We'll be right back. Smoke. Call 877-448-0433 to get on the air. Now, here's your host, Greg Rampey. All right, we are back. I want to thank Scott Roberts again for joining me this past segment, doing the sauce. And he's got me sold on the hot sauce stuff, man. I'm down. I'm ready to go. I'm going to buy a big-ass can as soon as I'm off air. By the way, I did want to mention this, and thanks to John Dawson for reminding me. Uh, show regular Robin Lindars, a.k.a. The Grill Girl, getting a hearty congratulations from this guy as well as her friends and supporters on pushing out a brand-new baby last week. Uh, so she is in the midst of new motherhooddom, her and Scott. So we wish them very well and a congratulations to them. All right, all the way back in the first hour. Uh, We did talk with Mike Fritz from the Pork Brothers. We talked with Daniel Vaughn from Texas Monthly. And then we talked with Scott Roberts doing this whole thing with the barbecue sauces, the wing sauces mainly. Uh, If you want to use the raw cast iron, it's season each and every time. September 11th, 2001. I will never forget. Until next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is your program host and proud U.S. American, Greg Rempe. Good night now.